<laughs> Welcome to Teachers Seeking Teachers. Um, we have, uh, we do this every once in a while, um, probably not enough, but um, somebody has uh, made herself known and she's on a mission and we thought we'd invite her. Monica uh, Hardy um, watched a couple things that uh, that Paige Wood Woodard, right? Yes, is on and so forth, and and uh, said, "You guys should get together." She got real excited. So um, I said, "Let's do it right away." And so here we go. We're going to talk to Paige Woodard, who is going to introduce herself. So you're a senior um, in Indiana, and Joe Paricio is with us as well. Um, Joe is a teacher of seniors and others, I think at Fremont um, High School in Oakland, California. And we're using this as an excuse to connect with some of those students as well. And um, you know, we've invited many other students, but this is what we have so far. And we'll see what happens. Um, Ms. Paricio is, is back channeling, and, and she, I think you're on everything right now, trying to connect I, with the kids. I've got, I've got everything. I've got everything going on right now. It's great. <laughs> Okay. And they're Very responding. Cool. They just can't get on because of the. So, so let's see yeah, so what let's happens see. as we go. Um, <laughs> oh, you mean because of the age stuff, really? I don't know. I don't know. They're trying. I they said went down I have to three 13, kids so man. far. Okay. What have they All said? Right, here we go. They're. <laughs> they're right. um, they're asking me point blank. Should I lie about my age? I'm like, no. So I don't know if it's an age thing. I don't get it. I should have tried that one or checked for that. Yeah, it's okay. Um, well, we'll see. Hold on. Basam is on, but of course, ironically, we can't hear him. Yeah, well, well as, this will well. be a really good interview with Paige, <laughs> <laughs> which is fine. <laughs> Paige, introduce, introduce yourself. We'll see what happens. So you know what? Um, I have... Never mind. You know I can't say anything, but um, however they can get here, we can make it happen. I got you. Yes. Okay. Okay. Paige, welcome. Thanks. An interesting problem to start with here, but introduce <laughs> yourself. Say, say a little bit about yourself and, and what um, what you're working on and the class you're in and, and what you're hoping to accomplish, just to get us started. All right, my Welcome. name is Paige Woodard, and I am currently a senior at Franklin Community High School in Franklin, Indiana. And I am currently working on a social media project that is going to integrate social media into the education system. And I think my greatest goal um, that I hope to accomplish is bringing um, awareness to the student responsibility that we do have on social media. So say more about that. What do you mean about where awareness? So and, and uh, break down some of your terms for us a little bit. Um, social media. What are you specifically talking about? Um, I normally when I refer to social media, I am talking mm -hmm. about Twitter and Facebook. However, um, as I have done my research and talked to many other administrators, it's um, broadened to more of Instagram, Pinterest, Snapchat, um, and I think that's about the main gist, but social media networking sites as a whole. Mm -hmm. So how did you personally get interested in bringing this into schools? Um, I am part of a student-run project-based class called Innovations, and um, we... And your teacher's week, names, mention them, please. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, Miss, Mr. Don Wetrick is the teacher of this class, and we pick a project that we're supposed to focus on either for two weeks, a semester, or the entire year, and... I actually didn't know what I wanted to do coming into the class when I was asked to join in May. Um, however, a key component of innovations is class collaboration. And so with a lot of brainstorming, we figured out that social media is a um, key aspect of teenagers' lives. Shocker. Um, and so then I wanted to take a new spin on it and say, you know, our school blocks a lot of social media sites. However, it has provided a lot of opportunities to other people. So why not try to make 
um, a driver's ed video of some sort to where we teach administrators how to bring social media into their school district. So my final project will be a DVD that I will sell to administrators that will explain why social media is beneficial in the classroom and how it can be incorporated into the curriculum. Cool. Joe, do you have any quick questions to start? <laughs> Uh, no, I'm just interested to hear where it's going to go and how, I mean, I'm on that next, uh, I want to see how the administrators respond because, Paige, what you're talking about with the, especially the filters, I mean, we run into that issue so much that um, it, it's, it's hard to do much of anything that you're talking about where we can use social media for civic engagement and, and then the kids being able to just get on sites like Pinterest, et cetera, that'll be... That's wonderful, but if, you know, things are blocked that they search for, um, et cetera, it, it's... It's tough. It makes them question what is what is information and what is its value and why is it getting filtered. Um, so I applaud you much for your journey that you're embarking on. It's awesome. Thank you. I think the um, most radical school administrator that I've talked to is Eric Scheninger, who is the principal at New Milford High School in New Jersey. And um, I did ask him, you know, how do you step into giving your students so much responsibility? And I think the greatest advice he gave was, you know, students will misuse the things that they are not allowed to have. They will go to a bathroom and waste time during class to send a text message. But if they're given that responsibility and this trust is instilled in them from day one, then they're not going to think that they're doing a bad thing and it's not a big deal. It's a digital tool that you can use to collaborate and um, gain from. Yeah, and I think what you're what you're also talking about is there's a there's also a generational shift that you're you know that we have to respect where the people that are in charge you know it is a different generation of folks and and that's something that needs to be articulated and and put out there and so it is it's new it's so very new and so um, new can feel very can freak out the people in charge but rightfully so because we have to worry about the children and and that's partly why I agree with you that social media let it happen, and, but but teach the students responsibility because that's, you know, <laughs> that's the important part is the responsibility part. And, and I think that you're right. Letting kids do it, letting kids use it actively in the class, it does take out that, like, ooh, the sneaky deception factor if they get denied that. So I agree. Right. Yes. So what's happened in your own school page so far around some of those blocks and so forth? Actually, um, we are very behind from what I am <laughs> um, advocating for. We aren't allowed to use our phones during any time except for um, during lunch. However, this year they did allow um, students to use Twitter. However, Instagram and Pinterest and some other social networking sites are blocked. I have talked to my superintendent, and he is very for um, social media in the classroom and is very supportive of my project. However, some of the other administrators in the school district are, um, as Joe said, very cautious when using social media and allowing students that freedom. Um, so I think from personal experience, I understand how it feels for students to be barricaded from these opportunities. Um, luckily, I've learned ways to get around it, but I don't think that you should have to. I think it should just be a trust instilled in you. Um, but on the other side, I don't know how it is to have that freedom, and so that's really what I've been digging for, is trying to find students who do have that freedom and that responsibility to hold, and that's who I want to talk to to see what are the pros and cons of that trust. Mm -hmm. So, Joe, can can your student here, I forget his name, sorry, Basam, is it? Yes. Can, can you speak yet? Yeah, we can barely hear you again. <laughs> um, I guess I'll just communicate through my teacher by the by. Well, can you do you know where the microphone is? Can you just get close to the mic? It just sounds like you're far away. I don't know what's going on. I honestly do not know. Um, right. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 
That's much better. <laughs> totally. Can't see you now, but okay. jump in though. What are you What are you thinking? Um. Well, I mean, like, as the superintendent says that, I mean, shouldn't he be finding ways and like to open up the social media faster? Like, uh, if he could tell like the all the teachers and all the school principals in order for them to. In order for them to like open the, the page. Mm -hmm. Um, when you did get very close, it, it looked funny, but we could hear you much better. <laughs> By the way, uh, so if you want to try that, you can. As you're talking, but we'll jump in. So I, I look. So what? What? What's some of the pushback? You've gotten page. Some some people must have said, and, and I have another direction I want to take this in a little bit. But must have said, you know, it's a hopeless campaign. Why are you doing this? Um, what kind of? Yeah, you know, have others said this will never change to you, or yeah, or is everyone just encouraging you? <laughs> I actually haven't encountered an adamant this is not going to change because I do believe in this 21st century workforce people do acknowledge the fact that it is changing and I mm -hmm. think what is really amazing is that the education system has been running the same way for about a hundred years and it was designed on the industrial revolution thinking of um, just going through an assembly line and just you know standardized testing and that stayed the same for a hundred years but now we're in a more modernized technology based thinking and I think a lot of administrators acknowledge that or at least know that they eventually will not be able to run from it um, so as I haven't had anyone say completely no this will never change I definitely have had um, in my school district and um, talked to other teachers and administrators where people have said that it's not going to change just yet and I think they're just fighting and holding on until they don't have another option um, but I think it's inevitable <laughs> and so I think you might as well just take my advice and start watching my video and prepare yourself because it's happening. So when it happens, how, how, how are schools going to be different? I think schools will be different because students will be better prepared for the workforce that we're in. Um, we are more focused on technology to where uh, a lot of people actually don't know how to code and that is one of the jobs that are most sought after in um, businesses and companies such as Google as um, I just visited California a few weeks ago and mm -hmm. visited the headquarters in Mountain View California and they said that what coders and brand marketers um, are really the people that apply for the job aren't well equipped for the job that they are applying for and so I think with a social media technology based education system we will be better prepared for the employers needs that we are now seeking after um, we will definitely be better knowledgeable on how to use social media and how to rep your, represent yourself um, on an internet face to where it will never disappear and it will be forever and I think that's one of the things that students definitely don't realize but you are representing yourself as a person and if you're taking pictures of your boobs or tons of little selfies or saying I hate my job you know future employers are going to look at that and say you know you hate your job at White Castle what makes you think your job here is going to be any easier I just think we'll be better prepared for the world that we are coming into as we are a different generation. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> I, I, I uh, the way I come into this conversation, and maybe there are others jumping in here too, looks like that'll be fun if that happens. I got there. Katya, can you speak? Uh, huh? Sounds like it. Love it. So work, working out sound is the first thing you have to do, and then uh, <laughs> and then we'll figure it out. So you probably have to unmute yourself because we're not hearing anything, Katya. If you can find the unmute button. 
Top of your screen, hon. And as she's doing that, well... <laughs> How about now? Ooh. Yep, very perfect. Okay, we can hear you well. Okay. Introduce yourself, Katya. Welcome. Hi, my name is Katya Navidad, and I go to Fremont High School. I'm a senior. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. <laughs> and um, so we're talking about social media. We're talking about getting it into schools, uh, getting it unblocked and so forth. I don't know how much of this you've heard so far. Um, and it's, it's um, mm -hmm. one of... Um, so... Any quick thoughts that you have as, as you enter the conversation? Like, uh, what about, no. what about how, <laughs> how, what, one of the things we're thinking, well, go ahead. <coughs> Paige, why don't you summarize? Huh? You summarize you your that, thoughts. Please? Yeah, for Katya. Okay, so what I'm working on is integrating social media into the education system. And so we're basically just talking about what will the schools look like um, in this different system and why I think it's important. So if you have any um, opinion on the pros and cons of social media, we'd love to hear it. Or just anything that you have a question about or just a personal experience would be awesome. So like how, um, how social media could affect me or... What? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And what if you could okay, use so, social media um, in school? For me, social media, um, well, it helps us, helps me reach out to more people. And also, um, can I talk about technology? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So technology, I would say that is, it's good and bad. In, in a way, good because it has helped us more reach, like more stuff, you know? Like we can um, talk to more people, we can do much, much more, show our work to other people as well. So that's the good part. And then the bad thing is like, um, it's like, um, it's that technology is like over, overpowering. It's taking over like the old things that have been going on. So now, I don't know. I, I don't know how to explain it. Hey, you've got so a good got, start there, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me. Let me. Maybe I rephrase. Like, if what? Do, what okay. do we do? What do we do in the classroom? What have we done in the last year and a half? Maybe that that has dealt with technology that appealed to you that. Um, or that you've done in other classrooms at Fremont um, that helped you learn, or that that was useful to you. So, youth voices. Okay, that's a good start. Start there. What about youth voices, hon? <laughs> we um, we blog our um, we use youth voices as the way to show. Well, not to show. Well, to show and to reach out to other schools. And yeah, I, I, <laughs> I you know, I, I one of the things I'll emphasize from what you've been saying is you're talking about reaching out and connecting, but also yes. showing what you know, right? And yes, and, and, uh, so that's an, those are interesting kind of pair of things. Um, yeah. And Paige, let me let me jump to. Um, trying to say this, I, if if I were asked today to vote on you know whether or not to open Facebook, mm -hmm. I'd say no, we don't mm -hmm. need it. Um, so so I so some of the pushback I want to give is um, I mean Twitter maybe, but one of the things I want to ask is why do we need those corporations in our schools? <laughs> so that's that's some of the pushback I, I have. You know I mean. We could use others, other tools than those tools yeah. to to reach out to people and to connect and to show what we know. We can do so. My where it boils down to me is we can do better than Facebook. We don't need Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have a Facebook <laughs> nor Twitter. <laughs> uh huh. So well, I was just wondering. So how, I would, yeah. So I'm like on the. Yeah. Yeah, I mean Facebook. Could, Facebook would be used more as a friendly thing, and then, like, 
it's like for people feel comfortable with each other, right? Mm -hmm. That's why they have friends. Right. And, uh, I don't know. So, Katya, you don't have a Facebook at all, or you just have one at home, or what do you? I don't. You don't have Facebook. I don't have one at all. No. Was that a decision? No better. Was that a yes. decision, or it just happened? So, what? Why did you decide that? I decided when. Um, well, I've been decided this because um, many people, like many of my friends of teenagers. They were um, they were trying to persuade me to get one, but then like it's like really u useless to me. Like I, I don't do anything on it. It's a waste of time. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I do have to disagree <laughs> with that. Um, I definitely think that if you don't feel comfortable getting on Facebook, okay. Yeah. Twitter, you need it. I just I want to be honest. Um, you kind of need it and yeah. if you want, like you say, to connect with other people. I am yeah. a girl in small town Franklin, Indiana, that goes to a school surrounded by cornfields, and yet I was invited up to Stanford University to make a presentation in front of a class at Stanford University. Yeah. And I would not have been given that opportunity if I had not had a Twitter, at least a Twitter. You know, I mean, <laughs> I just feel like Twitter opens up so many doors to where you are not isolated to your specific location. You know, I'm talking to yeah. people right now, you're from California, and I'm in Indiana, and we're talking because of a social media technology site. And I think that's the beauty of it is... <laughs> to expand your knowledge. And so I'm not trying to like harp on you and criticize you, but no. <laughs> I think you should get a Twitter. Right <laughs> At least a Twitter. <laughs> no, but I mean like it's okay, not like since, a but you, since you said <laughs> it's not no, but like you said like you're you're like surrounded by cornfields and all those stuff. Like, I'm not. I'm I'm from <laughs> Oakland, California. I'm surrounded by people. I don't need more people in my life. Yeah. Then, I mean, all this opportunity comes to me by my teachers. I mean, I don't, I don't really, really necessarily need Twitter or Facebook. You're a senior, though, to right? Help me with um, with new things coming in. Yes, I'm a senior. Okay, just saying, because those teachers. But yeah, don't I, I, I would recruit. <laughs> 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 and then, then where do your opportunities come from? You know, you kind of have to make it yeah. available to yourself. Become independent, empower yourself, and take responsibility. Twitter, you don't have to tweet pictures of your boobs and selfies and, you know, <laughs> oh, say no, yeah. to other people. And that's what I'm trying to do is teach people to not be a bully on social media and to use it responsibly to further yourself in your personal career. And I know California yeah. has a lot of opportunities, so if you want to make a good impression, you want to represent yourself as a knowledgeable, well-rounded individual, and knowing how to use your technology responsibly and social media responsibility should be a requirement. No, I totally agree with you with that. Because, um, okay, so my personally, my friends, teenagers, yeah, they really don't know about how yeah. using Facebook or Twitter responsibility. Right, right. I totally understand. High school. Yes. Not a good time for people. Yes. <laughs> not a good time. Too many rampant emotions and outbursts, and it's rain it in, guys. Yes. Rain it in. <laughs> yes. Like, I actually, like, mm, okay, uh, well, for example, when, for experience, when I was with my cousin, I w and it was on her Facebook, of course. This happened like two years ago, by the way. Uh, I would see like her status with a lot of bullying, bullying status, and all those all those crazy things teenagers do right mm -hmm. now in yeah social network. Right, and I'm trying to reverse those actions. I hope you do. <laughs> so, so, give Twitter a chance, I promise. I will try to teach everyone else how to use it responsibly. 
<laughs> Not Paige. sure how well that'll go, but hey, I'm trying. <laughs> Paige, when you say you're trying to reverse, what do you mean by that? Just ha reverse the effects of people not using it responsibly. I want people to understand that what you put on the internet does not go away. And so I want people to kind of reflect on what they're going to put out there and reverse the negative consequences of using profanity, um, tweeting out bad pictures, subtweeting, bullying, that kind of thing. You know, I think social media and its use has gone completely in the negative direction, particularly with cyberbullying and with profanity and not representing yourself in a good light. And I'm mm -hmm. trying to bring it back and try to get everyone else on the right track. Uh, well, how would you do that? Hassan, just try to move yeah. toward the mic again, if you can. We, we really want to hear you, but go ahead. All right, well, I am first um, in the process of filming a DVD that I will sell to administrators that explains how social media can be incorporated into the curriculum and why it's beneficial to do so. Um, so I will kind of give some suggestions of these are what administrators should teach their students. Um, this is why students abuse social media, and this is how to reverse those effects. Um, so then it, I kind of pass that on to the administrators and put it in their hands to get their students on the right track. Um, I'm also trying to start some convocations and get that out there um, to go to middle schools um, and as well as like fifth grade on and talk to the students about their responsibility on social media to make sure that they understand that what they put on there will be judged by college admissions, future employers, as well as your own friends and family. Um, can I, can I Jojo, ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Um, uh, part of what the work, I guess, is for administrators, this, uh, the audience that you're talking about, Paige, is you're saying administrators primarily because this is, these are the folks that you're going to funnel your DVD through, um, where you have a message and you want it to reach a lot of people. Um, the, uh, if I was an administrator and, I was, and I'm trying to be in their shoes, and I'm, my job as an administrator in terms of taking care of my students is to uh, evaluate what's being offered to me. Um, what is it about like your, we have to evaluate the credibility of the source. So what, what credibility do you have beyond a teen who's a user of social media, obviously very proficient, obviously knows it well, um, <laughs> that, would, that would then help us trust the message. Um, so what is it about your identity or your presence online that helps that would help an administrator make that decision of whether or not what your message is on the DVD is going to be appropriate for the students that they're in charge of? Right. So if you had to be in their shoes, what is it about <laughs> you that that will do that for them? That what is your credibility there? I think my um, just as my personal person of who I am. I have a professional Twitter that I specifically use for my purpose um, and use that for collaboration and to advertise the different projects that I'm working on. Um, aside from that, the past three months um, in my innovations class, I have been focusing on collaborating with administrators, teachers, and students who do use social media in their classrooms or have an opinion on the pros and cons of using it in the classroom and have put that onto my blog, um, which I will use as a database when I go back to film my DVD so I can refer back to, here's an example of what this school's doing and this is a tangible goal for your school as well. So it's not just my thoughts, my opinions, I am using social media, again, my point, to collaborate with other people who have put this in action and do have success stories or failures to say, you know, 
don't jump right into it or don't do step by step and I'm going to give the administrators in my DVD the opportunity to see a broad spectrum of using social media in the classroom and so they can take that however they wish but it is not just my opinion like I said. Mm -hmm. Paige, your blog, um, where, first of all, where, where can we find it? If you can find it at pageawoodard.wordpress.com, P-A-I-G-E-A-W-O-O-D-A-R-D. And did you start that as part of this class or did you have it already? Or? Um, I did start it as part of this class. I started my Twitter, professional Twitter first, and then two days later I started my WordPress blog where I use um, different TED Talks, articles, statistics, facts, whatever, um, or different things that inspire me and put that onto my blog as well. So it is not just um, different administrator things, it's also these are what other people suggest and whatever. I try to grab as much information as I can and throw it onto my blog for later. And do you consider your blog part of the social media that you're working with? I do not focus on blogs as much as some of the other social media. I do believe it is a great tool for students to use. Um, however, I do believe a lot of schools, um, if not most, allow blogging sites. Um, is your site so. open at your school? Yes. yes. Um, okay. So Good not news. Tumblr, um, as you can find some very inappropriate for school things on Tumblr. Um, which so is true. an aspect I maybe could work on, but I think that is a little much. <laughs> for, What's a little um, much? I missed that. Sorry, say that again. The tumblers, I haven't tried conquering convincing <laughs> administrators to use Tumblr. Um, as I, I don't are find they, teachers who do use it, though, so... But go ahead, yeah. Right. There, there are just some things that could be considered pornography on there. Um, and that's where I don't know. I will let school administrators handle that one. Um, if you, I, I am unaware of whether or not you can put certain blocks of on specific sites if they can't view this specific type of um, genre of something or mm -hmm. not. So I've kind of left that one out, and I do acknowledge that. <laughs> Yeah, Sorry. about that. I have, I have a, I actually have a Tumblr, and I so agree with you with with that. But yeah. I also like since I'm interested in graphic design and all those stuff, Tumblr is such a great way for me to get new ideas of architecture, all those hashtags of architecture and then interior designs. Like a lot of like, there's actually a lot of professional mm -hmm. phot photographies of all those stuff. Tumblr is a great way for me. For me to like, um, to explore, you know, like to go to there, not right. just yeah, okay, oh well, yeah, right. But, but so that's a good example, Katya. If we could ask about that, you, you you can't do that exploration and that learning in school, right? On your Tumblr. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I just use it on my phone because <laughs> I think it's blocked in, if I go to on computers. Mm -hmm. So I mean, but yeah, like it, it is such a great help for me to, with um all the designs for my graphic design programs. So your school allows you to use your phone, or you're able to somehow. It's without, an after school program, so. Yourself right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um no, they don't allow me to use it. But okay. when I um when I ask the teacher if I have a great idea, but I have it on my phone. They would, they would allow me to use it. Got it. Yeah. Yes. So, let me. I'm gonna. I want to try to ask, and this may be hard, but I want to. I, I. If if I had any any um comment about what you've said so far, um, Paige, mm -hmm. I'm just sort of um interested to hear more examples and for you to find more examples of, of a broad range of social media including something like Youth Voices or Tumblr or many other possibilities, right, that, that, that are kind of idiosyncratic and, and um, I don't know, 
<laughs> niche. You know, they're, they're, they feel they feel small niches. Um, because I am concerned about. Um, well, n let me try to say this positively. I'm, I I would like to hear more about how the learning changes because of social media. And I've heard some uh, something about you know getting your voice out to the world. Um, it's about connecting to a lot of other people. Um, so can you kind of think about that a little bit? Like in your own school, in your experience perhaps in this class that you're in, has there been a use of media that has that you've done learning differently than you've done it in other classes? Or have well, you I heard about that? Yeah. The greatest thing, um, the difference of using something like Edmodo or mm -hmm. Remind 101 or something that is school-based is that mm -hmm. influential people that are actually doing what students are passionate about in the world don't use it. I don't think you're right about that. <laughs> and 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 I, I've got to give I, me you know, an example yeah. then of what sure you're I mean talking yeah. about. What do you mean? What do you mean they don't use it? I don't think, okay, so I mm -hmm. have recently um, been in contact with Howard Rangold, who is an mm -hmm. author and a professor uh, specialized in modern communications and technology. Um, mm -hmm. He's been working in the field since 1980s. He's been on the show too, yes. Yeah, very, yeah very okay, good. awesome, so you know him. <laughs> yeah, um, cool. He found me on yeah. Twitter. Right. Um, he is a professor, so he may be using more of the social um, sites for students and teachers and whatnot. Um, however, other people that I've been in contact with, like um, Hoda Kotb and different um, Kevin McCarthy, different journalists and stuff that I was into for a long time, don't use those sites. And so I would not be exposed to their work and collaboration with them yeah. if I was not allowed to use Twitter. Mm -hmm. So if you could give me an example maybe of what you're more leaning towards instead of Twitter and Facebook, um, then I can do more research on yeah. who uses it. However, I don't yeah. think those type of people would use it. But I could be wrong. <laughs> no, I, yeah. Well, the, the other point I'll make, and then I'll, I'll sit back and, and, and think about it a little bit too, um, is that... Um, there, there's something a little bit creepy about using something, if I could use that word, about using something that is, that has such personal resonance with kids in school, right? So, so like, why should we take something that is, you know, very, I've said it already, I don't know how to say it differently, but the... It's not just administrators that you'd have to turn around. There are students who you'd have to turn around too and say, you can use this tool in a very different way. So I'm just wondering if you if you want to communicate with those folks too, with, with, with peers, about, you know, why don't we start using this differently? Right. I mean, you will always... That question was all over the place, so do whatever you want to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you will always encounter people, the little 10 or 20 percent of the student population that just will not succumb to whatever everyone else is doing um, and won't want to rethink the way that they're representing themselves on social media sites. However, my mission is not directed towards those people. Um, <laughs> you know, I've seen how social media has affected my life, my future. Um, I've recently rethought my entire career path due to my opportunities through innovations class and these are the type of students that I'm targeting. If you think that there's a possibility that there's something bigger out there for you and you want to try to pursue um, passions and collaboration with people who are doing what you want to do in life, then those are the people I'm targeting. You know, the 10, 20% that say, well, I want to use it for however I want, blah, 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 blah. Go ahead, see how future employers look at you, college admissions look at you, and there you go. I mean, I'm not going to be able to change the entire world um, and their oh, come opinion. On. 
on that. <laughs> but I do want to at least make an impact. Sure. Come on, Katya, do you have any thoughts? Or? Um, no, not for now. Okay. Fair enough. So, so the, the innovations class has changed. Oh, I had two questions. I, the, one of the questions was, you, you mentioned a couple times that you have a professional Twitter. You have a personal yes. Twitter also? Yes, I do. Um, okay. Again, I do censor and monitor what I do put on those sites. Um, mm -hmm. And if I do feel the need to say something, it is not in public <laughs> because I know how negatively that have, that represents me as a person. And maybe that's just a self-conscious and self-awareness that other people need to learn. And that's something that I'm also working on with showing students that they do have a responsibility as well on social media. It's not just the school administrator's uh -huh. uh, mission or task to help monitor. Mm -hmm. Is it Jorge? Or do you want to yeah. introduce? Welcome. Hello. Introduce uh, yourself, Floyd. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, my name is Jorge Espinosa. I'm one of the students of Ms. Marisa in her sixth grade class. Welcome. Hey, Jorge. So Hi. what have you, what do you, I don't know if you've heard any of this conversation, but what do you think about social media and how it might, um, I don't know, I, it, at least I think one place we are in this conversation is that uh, we're, we need to, a lot of people need to change their attitudes toward it um, and use it in productive ways um, and open it up in schools. I'm sorry, Paige, yeah, that isn't a good summary, but there we are. So far. No, that's all yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think it also depends on the maturity of the students themselves. Like, if they think that they can handle it, then they could. Otherwise, if they can't, then they can start messing around and not really pay attention in class. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting question. How do you deal with divided attention um, if kids are allowed to use media like that in school? Has anybody asked you that, um, Paige? Or yeah, anybody? Yeah. No, no one has asked me that. Um, I am still working on collaboration with Aaron. Eric Scheninger, um, as well as John Carver, who is a superintendent in Iowa. And I do believe that they are my two greatest allies in um, that they have already succeeded in integrating social media into the classroom. And so that's definitely a question I should pose to them is how um, maybe the teachers um, handle that and if they notice a decrease in the attention or test scores or um, however they want to lever that. Well, here's, you know, Sherry, Sherry Turkle is um, one of the, you know, n nobody agrees with everything she says, but um, one of the things she talks about is, is families having sacred time mm -hmm. um, and having time when all electronics are off. Right. She suggests, for example, that um, electronics do not come to the dinner table, and mm -hmm. electronics are not in the car, um, which I think are, is a really interesting kind of thing to think about. But if you if you can think about what she's saying there, I as a teacher, I've been thinking about what are the sacred spaces in my classroom when I don't want electronics on, right? And okay. you know. And, and but at, at other times I want it on, right? So how how to negotiate that and, and always be working with that? I think is something that we need to. It's not it's not easy for students to deal with because once they get it, they don't want to like give the sacred time up, <laughs> you know. Right. And and it's also not easy for us to always know what to do with it sometimes too. Well, so, in our yeah. schools, we do um, have. It was started like two weeks of our last year. Uh, just the last two weeks of school, we had bring your own device. And we just recently installed school-wide Wi-Fi and bring your own device. Uh, all the teachers have a little sign that they flip over, um, which is bring your own device and colon, off, or on. Um, and so teachers can monitor um, the class as a whole 
when to use social media or um, electronics in general. Um, however, you always see those one or two students trying to sneak it behind their backpacks or under their desks, and the teachers know. The teachers mm -hmm. don't point it out and don't care because as long as you're sitting there texting really quickly and then put your phone up and are paying attention, then you're not causing a problem. And I think that's where you need to monitor it is if you're sitting there completely consumed with what you're doing, you're obviously not paying attention at all and should leave. If not, and you're just quick and then you're back focused, then I don't think that there's a problem. And that's definitely something of thought is how do you ensure that there's still quality time being taught in the actual classroom. That's what the teachers are paid for. How do we make sure that their time is used efficiently? Mm -hmm. Anybody have any thoughts? I want to get more um, I, youth I, boys I, here. Yeah, I, go ahead. I do want to get back to the part about, though, um, if part of who you convince would be the teachers. Part of that, then, is what does the social media do for the learning? Because I've had many, many experiences where in my class, great students, and you're right, they, they can use it surreptitiously under the table, but in the end, I'm still going to have to repeat myself. And, and it was probably in that blip of a moment when they were thinking they could multitask. And there's this perception I'm feeling, and I'm going to sound so old right now, but there's this perception <laughs> that multitasking youth are actually more efficient and smarter youth. And that social media, this idea that it permeates all around, and I get on the same on the same tip. I get my generation. Oh, I sound really old. My generation that's finding ways <laughs> to, try to, to try to actually compartmentalize and set and actually segregate all of like the social media part. Like it's gotten to the point where we need to like turn it off. And so then now you have all these articles about sacred time and and this wanting to go back to that space where it wasn't just inundating all the time. So. I think there's there's one that is one thing to consider when you're when Paige when you're talking about you know talking to administrators is is the message then is filtered through the teachers and the teachers we are very much paid for that time but asking realize what you're asking you know what it might look like and how it might play out um, and also consider schools vastly different in terms of where you're saying our school got recently just got Wi-Fi there are many places where that doesn't happen because of resource access so are when you say the 10 to 20 percent that you're not talking to about this certain part of your message I, I'm wondering what's how are you what is the message or how will you reframe the message for schools where they don't have that actual resource itself um, by no fault of the school so so that's that's the other part too is yes it's great but then what do, what do we do if we don't have that social media access are you not speaking to us or or that school or that, that that would be my my, my push um, right. to the research or right. you know where, where you're going with it I do believe it's definitely a movement and it's an evolution and it's not going to happen overnight I'm not going to fill my DVD finish ship it off and that's the end it is a lifetime mission um, I may not see it completely permeate the entire education system even in my lifetime um, but do recognize that it will happen eventually, and if it's not Twitter and Facebook and other social networking sites, it will be something to do with technology. Um, you know, that's just where our society and our culture is moving towards. Um, you know, I the schools that do not have that access, I'm not saying that you know they're less than the people that don't. I'm just saying this schools that do have the opportunity to provide that opportunity for their children um, is definitely worth taking. And I don't believe that schools, just because I say social media should be integrated into the classroom, I, I say integrated, not take over. Um, I don't think that the classroom should always be plugged in to show social media, as I do understand sacred time. Um, boosting the learning is a, a teacher doesn't know everything about the subject that they're teaching. Mm. There's just so much. Mm. And so, you know, if I'm in a Spanish class and I'm trying to look up some word and my teacher forgets it and it's not in the dictionary, I can go to Google dictionary.com and then I figure out that word. 
or you know if there's facts about biology or anatomy or you know math equations or you know it's just technology in general is a greater source and a digital tool that can benefit the learning experience of the individuals in the classroom. Here, here, I like those words. That's good. I, you know, and, and I would, I would, um, I would say that something that I've been trying to work on over the past few years, and others are too, is um, getting my all of my curriculum online, mm -hmm. which then kind of, um, you know allows an asynchronous kind of individualized exploration of that curriculum along with other things that will bump up against it. And it's not my curriculum, right? It's it's open to lots of sources and so mm -hmm. forth. So so that changes the, the relationship of the teacher and the student. You then become a real, you know, helper alongside using the technology yeah. as opposed to as you as you just said so very clearly, Paige, um, the provider of the information. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's that's an exciting way to use technology. Absolutely. Right. Go ahead. Did and you want to say something? Yeah. Expanding on that, um, mm -hmm. I actually just had to help some teachers um, start a website um, mm -hmm. for their class notes or assignments. If someone is absent, they can go on the website and find that information. And they were a little confused on, <laughs> you know, how do I maneuver this? How do I navigate this? Um, and so that is definitely the gap, as we the students expect it, and the generation that's now in the workforce are a little um, ill-equipped to use it. And that is. Um, now, when we are coming into the workforce, our uh, following generations are going to expect that from us as well. And so us starting using that social media and that technology in the classroom is only preparing us for the workforce and the generations that follow us. So if we're starting in high school learning these tools, we will use them in our future and it will just help accelerate the future generations that are following in our footsteps. We're getting up on time here. Katya, do you have any thoughts that you'd like to add at this point? Um, not really. Because uh, I kind of, I don't know. No, I don't have no comments. <laughs> Come on. What were you thinking? <laughs> no, that I, I do agree with like all the things she has said, how um, about using, techno using like all those sources during class to help us. Because I have done that a lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah. So you're gonna get you're gonna get a Twitter account? No, no, no way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still yeah, I'm still in denial <laughs> for that. By the way, you know, I mean, it's interesting that that young people, at least according to some recent uh, studies I've seen, aren't using Facebook as much mm -hmm. as um, you yeah, know, they're not. Slightly older people are, but yeah. so. Yeah, I, I don't know. I look. We all, not we all. I, I certainly use it. Um, the, 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 those other social media. But I, and, and obviously we're using Google right now. I just think it's yeah. really important to temper our enthusiasm, mm -hmm. and and kind of be critical about our enthusiasm for all this stuff, which I love yeah. too. Yeah. Um, and and remember that there are, you know, there, these are major economic forces in our lives too and you know it's a movement yeah but it ain't a grassroots movement you know <laughs> so so I, I don't know what to do about that because you know we can't have this conversation without Google but you know so anyway I just wanted to I, I have no solutions to that but I think it's worth at least thinking about a little bit and schools again and schools are a place where we don't want commercials, and we don't want you know corporate you know people pushing them themselves into schools. So I would have you know at least some pause about bringing some of this stuff into schools, just based on some of that questioning. But I've said enough. Um, <laughs> probably too much of that. Jorge, do you want to say any more? Am I saying your name right? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, you are. Okay, good. <laughs> Any thoughts uh, here toward the end? And thanks for finally getting on here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It took a while. 
Um, <laughs> I think everyone said already what needed to be said. So yeah. Well, let me ask this, um, and and uh, Joe's students, if you could chime in. You guys all have a senior project too. What are your senior projects? And um, Paige, you've given a, an amazing example. One of the things that Joe and I um, are going to be talking about um, later <laughs> this month um, is is how to move from I don't know. We talk about this all the time, but how to move from um, publishing our ideas and our thoughts in words and and taking action. And you're a wonderful example of doing both words yes. and action. Um, yeah. So thank you. Just wanted to, wanted to check with the students who are here. What what are your projects and what are you thinking about? Could you speak to that a little bit? You you all have seen your projects too. <laughs> yeah. Katya, what are you, what are you working on? I'm working on inequality of um, of women in in, uh, in construction industry. Wow. So like how society views at it and how it like how women feels about um, in the construction industry. So, yeah. Yes, because I'm really into construction and graphic design. So that, that's like that really like my attention to it because also um, in class I have construction too and like the guys would be like oh what are you doing this aren't you supposed to be sitting down like the rest of the girls and that's like really uh, <laughs> heat things up and so <laughs> I came up with my senior project <laughs> yeah. so but design is construction because I think no, of it's not. Helmets on, no, it, but. yeah, it's a whole different <laughs> things. But I'm mean, I'm into both. So, but okay. yeah, I'm into both. That's our academy program, Paul. Is architecture? Yeah. Ah, I see. Academy. Yes. Got so got it, got we got do it. both. Interesting. Now, Jorge, what are you working on? Uh, mine is how manga, which is basically a Japanese comic book, can have different universal effects on those who read them. I. Like, I just um, I just promoted your your piece to the <laughs> front page that. recently, so I'm I'm glad I had you on tonight. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So like it has universal one. appeal. Is that your question? Why it does? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. How's that going to move to action? You don't have to have an answer to that, but. <laughs> Good question, that, Paul. That... You hear that, Jorge? <laughs> it may absolutely, but no pressure. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> um, I, for one, know that, um, like for me and Bassam, because sometimes we, <laughs> we also have those heated arguments over the manga sometimes. And I also know sometimes that, um, because um, people in my family, they don't know what like what manga is. And sometimes I tell them like some stories of ones that I read or something, and they seem really interested in them. And I used to tell some other people, and they also start getting into the story as well. And I also feel that um, once people start getting into manga, they get hooked. Uh, so I feel like um, that way, pe that way, pe students can learn how to read without, you know, like you know, those big textbooks that they usually have. And they mm -hmm. actually start reading something they enjoy because there's <coughs> different types of manga which people can read that um, that span a whole different types of people. So, yeah. Wow, well, gosh, I'm looking at the time, and I, I feel like we just started talking. I but know. Anyway, <laughs> it's, it's okay. We'll do this but, again, Paul. Yeah, we should. I'm, I'm glad you guys got on. At least maybe we can Good come job, back. Good job, But, 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 Jorge, I'm, I, I do the, um, oh, I, I wanted to ask you, how did you learn about Menga? Um, and, like, what are the social networks that you're involved in that inform your experience of that? Well, I first started watching, like, you know, as a kid, I was watching, watching uh, Dragon Ball Z, Yu-Gi-Oh, yeah. all that stuff. And then Basim introduced me to Naruto. And then, and then after that, I started going into, like, like um, went into more about manga and stuff. And then, um, wait, what was the second part of the question? I, 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 yeah, you didn't quite get that. I'm, I'm wondering if you, you use social media to connect with other people who are interested in it. In manga as well. Oh yeah, I, mean, um, I use this one website where people can read manga online, and then you can comment below, mm -hmm. and then um, it's connected to Facebook itself too. So people who have Facebook accounts can sometimes uh, talk on there about the recent chapters, like what do they think it meant, what does it represent, 
how do they feel about it, and stuff like that. I sometimes um, talk on that as well. It's, 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 it also gets very heated sometimes because people really like manga, apparently. Mm -hmm. So that's something also you, you also can't explore at school then if Facebook is, is blocked, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that site blocked too? Uh, the yeah, site where yeah. it is it is blocked. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, um, Basam, can you speak up or not? Um, can you yeah, go ahead. Just last thoughts. Go ahead. <laughs> last thoughts about his, his senior project or? Yeah, go ahead. That would be nice to know. I mean, about what he was saying about his senior project. Um, it's true that most of the sites are blocked, like the, a lot of manga, a lot of manga sites are blocked, which not allows most of the students that we know, most of our friends that like manga and that would like to read manga, especially yeah. during lunch or after school. And, uh, the sites that are blocked, it most, I don't understand, I honestly do not understand why they're blocked. But then they end up block. They end up being blocked, and a lot of students in our school see them because of, because when they go home, they always have responsibilities. But when they're at school and they have time, they want to read manga, but then they are not allowed to. Those are good points. <laughs> What's your senior project? Uh, my senior project is about how it's unfair for. Middle Eastern employ uh, Middle Eastern youth that are employed uh, to pretty much take over the family business while having to try to take care of their own education. Yeah. Because, like for instance, right now I'm in the store and <laughs> I'm, I'm also trying to be on the hangout, which kind of con contradicts itself because I have to be at pretty much at the back of the store so I can even hear you guys, um, which sucks. Because I'm pretty much forced to be here. But at the same time, I'm also trying to do my academic stuff. So it's kind of unfair. I'm mm -hmm. also trying to work on that. But then at the same time, I will, some field research I would like to go into is going to other stores and talk to the owners, the fathers, and see how they would like, how they would like have their children to be more academically involved instead of always being inside the store. So this way their grades could go up and they could have a better future than being stuck in the store. I have some students who I worked with this summer who I'd like to introduce you to who would work with us in a summer program like all day and then leave and go work in their family store. So, or their, or the laundromat sometimes too. So yeah. Youth working the way you're working is uh, certainly a big issue. So. Way to go. Interesting. Interesting. So, um, Paige, thank you so much for <laughs> bringing up a lot of great issues. I, I should have warned you that we like to push back. We don't like to just celebrate on this show. So I hope that was OK. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for having me. <laughs> OK. Good. And I really do think we should do this again, folks. Yes. Um, and I we agree. Could, it would be great if um, I would be all for just uh, shutting up, too, and sitting uh, in the background <laughs> and letting letting some youth lead these things, too. So we should okay. we should think about that. Right. So anyway, um, Paige, do you have any final thoughts right before we go? Um, I don't know. I just think that uh, Katia, I'm sorry that I could not convert you to <laughs> social media um, today. However, no, no, wait, wait, wait. She's on social media. I'm she, thinking yeah, good. Good. someday Twitter. <laughs> You'll be on it. Let's hope. Let's hope. But she's all, but <laughs> she's all over. But she's. Kid. But she is all over Tumblr, right? So that's. A yeah, I'm a, I'm a Tumblr girl. That is true. Okay, well, I'm on there too, so maybe I'll see you around there. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I just want to mention here at the end that uh, we've been broadcasting like this um, for several years now, um, and uh, that was all started at um, edtechtalk.com, 
which is the uh, cha which is the uh, channel of the World Bridges Network. Dave Cormier and um, Jeff Lebo set all that up several years ago. And uh, you can find this eventually up on teacherseekingteachers.org, and it will be up on YouTube almost immediately. Um, thank you all. Awesome. Okay. Bye, guys. Good night. Good night. Thanks so much, Paige, Bye. and yeah. all Bye. everyone else as well. Gotcha. See you. <laughs>